Hi, grace and peace be yours from God our Father and from our Savior Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Ralph Hill and it's good to be with you today as we have a daily devotion. Today is um, Tuesday and it's April 28th. And I want to begin with a look at Psalm 134. Um, there's a section of Psalms called the Ascent Psalm. So today's Psalm is a song of ascent and it's simply three verses long. Come, bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, who stand by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands to the holy place and bless the Lord. May the Lord, maker of heaven and earth, bless you from Zion. So a song of ascent is a title that is given to 15 of the Psalms that we have. It's Psalms 120 through 134. They're also given other titles like gradual psalms or songs of steps. Um, and so they were songs that were songs that were sung by people that were going up to worship, the steps of worship. They're even called pilgrim songs. I remember when I was on a trip in Israel back in 2012, um, we read aloud some psalms when we were going on the bus uh, up the road toward Jerusalem. Um, and we sang some of these songs of ascent as a reminder of what it felt like to go from the lower levels, like near the Dead Sea is negative 1,300 feet below sea level, all the way up to um, Israel, the J Jerusalem, which is about 2,600 feet above sea level. And as you're going up this hill, our bus, we were singing these psalms. But here's the deal. Many of the scholars believe that the title indicates that the psalms were sung by worshipers, themselves as they ascended the road to Jerusalem to attend. Usually back then it was three of the major festivals. Festovers. They had this festival, um, festival of the Passover. Um, then they had festival of the weeks or Pentecost, which was actually the collection of the grain. Uh, and then there was the festival of the tabernacles or the tents. And that was usually the collection of the fruit that was around in the fall time of year. Um, and so people would sing these as they would go to Jerusalem during these festival occasions that were there. Others also think that they were sung by the Levite singers as they ascended the 15 steps of the temple to minister to the temple in Jerusalem. But either way, we have Psalm 134. It's only 15, uh, thir three verses long, but its essence is really in the first verse. Come, bless the Lord. And it's a reminder of how we as a people of God, that prayer and praise of God is natural. And it's actually um, to be like breathing in and breathing out. It's to be a natural part of our lives. It's to be part of what we call sometimes first commandment living, that God is, is first and foremost in our lives. I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods before me. And it's almost like what we say when we pray the Lord's Prayer, a prayer that Jesus taught us. Uh, Our Father who art in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. And then it continues about how we are to live out this new life we have as a people of God. So the question today, I think, is how do you pray? How do you pray? Now, as I was thinking about this, I know there are several types of prayer. I was remembering when I was a child, we prayed at my table uh, growing up, God is great, God is good, let us thank God for our food. By His hand, by God's hands we all are fed. Give us, Lord, our daily bread. Um, and when, as an adult, I teach kids sometimes the five-fingered prayer, that we're to pray for God for the leaders, these are the pointers, the leaders in the world. Uh, and then you have the tallest finger, so we pray for adults or people older people. This is our relationship finger because it often hands a, a wedding band on it, but people that we're in relationship with, these are uh, the smallest finger. So it's to pray for the little people or for children. And then you have the thumb, which is always pointing back to you, pray for yourself. And that's just a simple way of thinking about it. I think of uh, songs that I learned when I was growing up at a summer camp, like, help me Jesus to love my neighbor as myself. Oh, help me, Jesus, to love my neighbor as myself. It doesn't, he doesn't care about the color of your skin or what religion you've been in. Oh, help me, Jesus, to love my neighbor as myself. So we pray through songs as well. 
we teach in confirmation class, the ACTS acronym, ACTS, that there are prayers of adoration and confession, prayers of thanksgiving, and then supplication, which is when you pray for other people. I often like to think of prayer as a conversation, and one of my favorite ways to think of this is my, one of my favorite movies is The Fiddler on the Roof, and Stevia, who's the main character throughout the whole movie, basically lives in conversation with God. Uh, and there are several times where he's frustrated or he's joyful and he's talking to God. In fact, when you watch the clips about the movie, they say that there was a, a tennis ball or something just outside the, the upper part of the camera. And so he knew where to look every time he was talking to God, as if it was in the same place throughout the movie. And so there's one scene where he's talking to God and he goes, I know, I know. He probably said something about what was going on in his life. We are your chosen people, he says. But once in a while, can't you choose somebody else? He's talking about the, the difficulties they were facing as a people of God. But life is to be meant as a conversation with God on a daily basis. And then I was reminded one time of my uh, first parish that Cindy, my wife, and I were a part of. We were invited, I think, our first or second year there uh, to dinner with an older couple. Uh, they were lifelong farmers there, and um, there were a lot of fresh food at the table. But we're sitting around to the table, and we're getting ready to have the meal, and uh, we bowed our heads for the dinner grace. And the husband, who was at the head of the table, gave the grace, and he spoke he spoke very softly. You could hardly hear him. And then afterwards, when he was done with the prayer, his wife commented, you know, I couldn't really hear you, to what she didn't miss a beat, and he said, that's because I wasn't speaking to you. Just a, a reminder for me from time to time how it is a personal conversation that we have, that we talk with God and expect and know that God is there listening for us. So today's verse, Psalm 134, reminds me to pray, to make sure God's a part of my daily experience. And so how, how do you pray today? It doesn't really matter how. In fact, I think it's a joy to know that we can pray in a variety of ways. We pray as we sing or as we think or speak or even dance. Or if we can't speak, we can do sign language um, or use art or even an act of doing something, a deed that we do. In all these ways, we offer ourselves a conversation with God and God will hear us. And God is grateful for our participation and in including God in our daily life. I think God re receives all of the prayer that we offer in love. So let us pray today. Thank you, God, for who you are. Thank you, God, for making me and loving me. And help me to bless you today in whatever I do and say. In your name I pray. Amen. Hey, thanks again for joining us, and we hope that you can be with us each day as we gather together around these devotions and remind ourselves that we are God's people, given purpose, with a sense of being loving servants in the world. God's peace.